funny story about Melita. Can I tell you a funny story about we met? By the way, Chris, this is before. This is just funny. I'm to my Chris. I'm just talking to the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, Chris. Okay. <laughs> so like, I met Melita maybe 10 years. I don't know how long ago it was. It was some years ago. Years ago by everybody. And I was like, man, we was talking and she was so smart. And I was like, man. You are so smart. You're so beautiful. I wish you wasn't in the music business. Because, like, I don't talk to him in the music business. And you don't remember what you said to me? You said, how you know I'm going to want you anyway? <laughs> remember you said that? You yeah, was like, who said right? I wanted you, nigga? I was like, no, no, I wasn't saying it like that. You was like, I know, but I'm saying it like that. Who said that I even thought if I was in the business? And I was like, and at that moment, I was like, all right, cool. We're going to be cool as a motherfucker. <laughs> What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee, and I'm here to talk to you about Two Lost Distribution. They are one of the most technologically advanced distributors in music. They distribute to more stores than any of the distributors around. They distribute, uh, they give you 100% of your royalties. They only charge you $3 a month, and you have an instant option to get an advance from these guys. So if you're watching this and you want to be in the music business and you're trying to figure out how to get help, I'm here to tell you, go to twolost.com and use the word gods as your coupon code and you get the first three months free what's good everybody this is ray daniels aka the culture referee and this is the god show let's go and 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 this is international women's month so what i wanted to do this month more than any month is give voices to women who i love and respect and i've seen do it the right way because there are women that don't do it the right way like there are men that don't do it the right way we all know that but these three women they all get busy so we have melita from warner but melita has her own company and she manages the whole city of atlanta like if you i don't think there's nobody here that melita doesn't manage she got everybody we got sammy from atlantic sammy is an amazing a and r we'll get into all of this and then we have amina diop from the diop agency right. i got that shit didn't I? you ain't even had to tell me that shit i ain't not be watching y'all but um, let's get up for the ladies. Let's go. So, um, so um, yeah, ladies, how hard is it? How hard is it being a woman in this shit? I feel like it's hard being a man. You do? Why? Yeah. <laughs> Why do you think it's hard? I'm glad you said that. Uh, because obviously you have advantages and disadvantages. Like if a man runs a company, most powerful, successful men would much rather have female energy around them than they would masculine energy. And when I was coming up, I was super aggressive. And that aggression scared people away. Like, L.A. Would, Reed would tell me, like, dog, I was running from you. You just had this look in your eye. Like, I didn't know what you wanted from me. And I just was like, I guess I was obsessed with the concept of what he did. But I didn't realize that. So it's harder for men from that case to get in the room. It's easier for women to get in the room. But it's hard to get respect when you're in the room. That's the difference. So that's why I mean, like, I think it's hard. Like, like it's like... If I walk up to the club with 10 chicks, they let me in. If I walk up to the club with 10 niggas, they like, man. <laughs> we can't help you. We can't, man, bro, come on, man. You ain't got one girl. So women always have a pass for whatever reason. That's why I felt like it was hard. But like, I want to tell a funny story about Melita. Can I tell you a funny story about when we met? By the way, Chris, this is before. This is just funny. I'm talking Chris. I'm just talking to the camera. Oh, okay. Oh, Chris. <laughs> okay. So like, Chris. I met Melita maybe... 10 years, I don't know how long ago it was. It was some years ago. Years ago by everybody. And I was like, man, we was talking and she was so smart. And I was like, man, you are so smart. You're so beautiful. I wish you wasn't in the music business. Because like, I don't talk to them in the music business. And you don't remember what you said to me? You said, how you know I'm going to want you anyway? <laughs> remember you said that? You yeah, was like, who said I wanted you, nigga? I was like, no, no, I wasn't saying it like that. You was like, I know, but I'm saying it like that. <laughs> who said that I even thought if I was in the business? And I was like, and at that moment, I was like, all right, cool. We're going to be cool as a motherfucker. <laughs> But women have to do that. Like women have to, once they're in the room, establish I'm here for business. And it's a hard task. So, you know, we have a lot of females that watch the show. This show is for dreamers, but I, I see your perspective and I understand how hard it is. That's why I could tell a joke. Cause it's like, I was just, I was, we was out at the club one night and I was just being a nigga. Like, and then it was like, no nigga, I don't give a fuck where we are. I'm here for money, mm -hmm. which is, probably why you manage every producer in the city and you got your company is running. But like, it's hard for ladies like yourself to come in this 
But coming it into all of y'all to be in this shit over a decade? How the fuck did y'all do it? Who wants to go first? How hard is it? Give me the female perspective. Talk to me like I don't know. Um, I don't know that it's hard. Okay. I have a way harder job than the job that I do. Being a mother is harder than being Hello. in any fucking music industry. So they mother, so sure is. So, Y'all niggas so, don't appreciate mothers. Uh, we need more appreciate for mothers. I think that the hardest part of my job is balancing being a mom mm. and being a boss and running your own company. Yeah. And when I was at, you know, the label, mm-hmm. being SVP there, going back and forth from Atlanta to New York, going to LA, going to Brussels, going to, you know, these different places. I think that mommy guilt mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. probably the worst part of it for me. I love that you age. said that. Cause I, I feel that. I you know agree. Cause I don't, I'm not going to have nannies raise my kids. You know what I'm saying? My mom's Jamaican. But I've been, but I've been to your office before right and you, your kids was in the office. Oh yeah, yeah. I oh, think your gonna... son let me in and escorted me to you. <laughs> when I, it was years ago. Yeah. I love that. Like, I was like, oh, she ain't playing. Mama's ain't playing. Yeah. Nah, I mean, we'll be, yeah, it'll be at the door. So my thing is, is that my only, my issue with the buildings are, is that they want our influence. They want our presence, but they don't want our opinions it's like Malita I need you here because you check a lot of boxes you're a black girl Mm -hmm. you experienced Mm -hmm. like they you you a trophy to a lot of these companies by by the way I realized I was too Mm -hmm. that's what threw me off because I'm like I don't mind being a trophy but nigga that's cool I don't mind being a black face but can I build something for myself Mm -hmm. because when I when I stopped working at Warner I ain't receive another fucking check. They still making money from everything I did. Meanwhile, I signed Ivory Scott. I signed A1. I signed people. I'm getting money from them in my sleep. Then it'd be like, why can't I do that and work with y'all? I don't mind you. If if you know you need me for my influence, then allow me to build my own shit while you leverage my influence. I.e. why I name my company LYI. Leverage your influence. Like, I didn't, I felt like, like everybody on this couch is made like we some mafia shit y'all are all made women the companies are leveraging y'all they don't want nobody who ain't made because they gotta announce we got melita <laughs> sammy's in here we got amina like it's like okay but are you allowing sammy amina and melita to do everything they need to do because then at the, that moment they're just faces for you to use to say like i wrote this letter and i said i hate when they call me in the room for black artists Oh, we got this artist coming to town. Who's in the office? Oh right. shit! So you what is she? All the, her all the black faces her manager's room. black. Yeah. All right, cool. Bring Melita. And then they gotta hoard you uh, into uh, space. And now you gotta come in and just yeah. smile. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on. <laughs> you just in the meeting, like, yeah. And, I, and then you, and then as soon as the meeting is over, all right. It's like that. It's like that scene from 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 Trading Places where Eddie Murphy come, well, he comes to character Dan Aykroyd's character and say, "Hey guys, I found some money that people are stealing." And he was like, "Thank you. Give me that." Yeah, this is something we got to check on. Then they went back to Renee Swift newspaper and they was like, all right, Randolph. Like, <laughs> bitch, he looking like, I'm trying to show you I'm a value. And they like, dog, we don't need you for that. And to me, that's what it is. But that's a whole another story because you guys are still thriving. That's the thing I love the most about y'all. Like, regardless of what they're doing, you're not allowing it to stop y'all from winning. And y'all passion from going. And I mean, even when you leave, they, the artists are still going to work with you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I just That's that. the hard part. <laughs> like, so, well, like, no, not me leaving, but the artists end up getting, you know. Yeah, like, and yeah. like, dog, I still, every artist that I still dealt with at Warner, except Chopper, we still keep in touch. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. it's like, bro, like, nigga, I signed this. And I said this again, I'm going to say this for y'all. My opinion is the music industry is fucked up because all they care about is the owners, which is the labels, and the artists, which are the players. Mm-hmm. Nigga, them artists cannot win without the, a coaching staff, without the right people. And they don't value us. So I'm glad that that was mentioned because to me, that's my frustration. So even when people are like, you want a job, I'm like, bro, they can't offer. I am, y'all are sitting here talking to a free nigga. Mm. I've never been a free nigga my entire, I didn't even know being a free nigga was an option. Well, it's fun. It's, Malita, I ain't gonna lie, being a free nigga is so, it's so freeing. It's like, it nigga, cause you real, cause another thing is that these labels occupy 90% of our time and they really need about 10% of it. 
but I'm paying you. So you're going to sit on this four hour call, <laughs> even though our tw- and our, and our two hour and 20, <laughs> we're going to talk about your shit, but you're going to stay on everything. And it's like, why am I here? To have another Zoom call, to have another Zoom call, and then emails. To and then they still want the work to be done. Schedule a Zoom call. Like, girl, you could just text me the time. Like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah, like, like, absolutely not. Like, it's such a waste of time in, in essence. They waste so much time. It doesn't make any sense. And I ain't going to lie to you. I feel bad for anybody in today's industry because I did have an opportunity to work at Epic when a black man ran it. And yeah. it was the greatest time of my life. Like, I never, I, I learned the most. I, uh, uh, I was having the most fun. It was the greatest time of my life because it was the music business. Mm-hmm. We ain't. It was about music. Yes. And it's like, I worked mm-hmm. at. I'm being honest with y'all. I don't care. I'm telling the truth. When I was with LA, <laughs> no one, you seen LA read, nigga, Melita, you can give this nigga a hit on Monday. When that nigga see you, and he gonna celebrate you on Monday. He gonna make you feel like you can fly to the moon <laughs> that Monday. But when that nigga see you that Friday again, where's my, ex, where's my next hit? You don't need, as good as the last thing you did. Yeah. Then, I wor- then I went to other companies and they don't even bring up music. We don't even play me. I, when I was at Warner, I probably oh, played God, music. Ray. No, I'm not going to say you. I'm saying when I was at Warner, which was a job that I had, my experience, mm-hmm. I probably played six songs in three years. Oh, wow. Six songs in three years. They don't care about music. They care about dates and deliverables. That's what, that was my experience. That, that not have to be nobody else's. That was my experience. But that was also my experience because I worked at a company where music was the bottom line. So... Maybe if I never worked for L.A., I might think this is normal. Mm-hmm. But when you work for L.A., you c- couldn't wait to play him a hit. You couldn't wait to come in a room with your three or four songs like, I'm going to blow their ass away today. <laughs> I can't. You, you know, and when we weren't doing that, it was like, well, what am I competing for? How does anybody even know what I know? I swear to God, y'all, I started talking on this podcast because I said, I want another job, but I don't want to go ass on. So I figured. I live in Atlanta. Atlanta is the forgot about in place until an artist comes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, nigga, they love our artists. When it comes to executives, they, they laugh at us behind our back because they don't think Atlanta has smart people. They just think Atlanta has talented people. Just pay attention. Just watch. Think about it. How many, every time an Atlanta exec gets picked up, what do they got to do? You didn't have to. Smart. Move to New York. Move to New York or LA. But you know what? They have, <clears throat> I'm going to say something about Atlanta because I am a, I'm in Atlanta. No, nah, you went to school now, here. You with us, right? But um, I'm from New York. But what I found is we have um, amazing executive type people, but they don't want to go in the building. That's just the problem. That's Barry true. ain't going in no building. Hell no. Amber went in the building for a second, jumped right back, right out, back out. Went to LA for a second, came right back to Atlanta. Yeah. So it's like we have our own executives, but we're hustlers, so we build our own thing. They mm-hmm. went and built LVRN. You know what I'm saying? Barry built since the '80s. Like Coach them did QC. Like. You know, Gooch did 10 7 yeah, Everybody. Everybody. So, but, like, we, but we build have your to. your own thing. We have to. I mean, I don't think we have to at this point. I think that the way that we love our artists and the way we put on our artists, you have to. No, but what I'm saying is we have to because they're not coming down here saying, who should I give a deal to? They, they, they don't come to Atlanta and say, who should I give a deal to? They come as, to Atlanta. As far as they come exactly. to Atlanta and say, what like artists, artists are popping? Oh yeah, no, no, no. That's, yeah. that's and true. they and they prefer to be a no name manager, new guy, so they can. Sense. You know that, right? Yeah, yeah. But they know we come in. We like, nah. This is how it goes. Yeah. So that's what I mean. Like, dog, we just don't get. They don't see us for brains here, because I, I know why. Because we don't have an ecosystem like Nashville and right, and, right. and um, Miami does. Like Nashville, you gonna follow their rules. We right. don't have rules here. Whereas, like, you can't sign no artist unless it's with a. Like, if we did shit like that. It might be different, but they don't want our brains. I will I, say with Atlantic, though, I didn't have to move either. And Atlantic is one of the only labels that has a set up a building, set up a building here. It's been here for a long, years. Yeah. And by the way, shout out to Atlantic. That's why they always at the top, because they understand how to empower. There are a few companies now out of power, but my thing is this, is that if Sammy found a new artist that she thought was incredible, that she was like, this is my Bruno Mars. They're going to say, you can't manage it. No, a thousand percent. Yeah. But my thing is, why can't I? This right. a conflict like, of interest. Well, what's the conflict? If the artist is, You're conflicting with their interests. That's my point. <laughs> 
What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And if you were wondering who this beautiful woman sitting next to me is, is my sister Tiffany Daniels Sai. Let's give it up for my sister. Everybody get clap. This is good. And my sister is, she's the most talented person in the family. And we started a family business, a signature scent company. So if you like smoke a lot of weed in your car and you want to get the scent out, you have to check out these scents. I know guys that use it for the weed. I know people that use it for cologne and everywhere they go to get compliments. We make candles. We make room sprays. We got them in kits. So if you want to buy something for your loved one or anybody, you know, that you care about, Hit us up, LorraineCo.com. And we're going to put the website at the bottom of it. Uh, but support this black business, support this black woman, and order, I promise you guys. As a matter of fact, use the word gods, and we'll give you 15% off. I just made that up, so if my sister's <laughs> face looks crazy, don't get mad at her. I'll eat that. But guys, when I tell you this shit is incredible, you really should check this out. The best sense ever. LorraineCo.com. And we'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Thanks. That's the obvious <laughs> problem, by the way. That's what I was getting at. Like, the conflict of interest is, is we don't want you knowing the other side. We don't want them knowing what we're thinking. Right. Nigga, and for me, it's like, that's why I think Atlantic is the best. Sony, number one market share. Yeah. By the way, every company that has a number one market share in their place have, have shops mm -hmm. or people here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. Everybody else that doesn't is like, okay, you'll learn. And it ain't even because I want money. It's just because... It's too many dope ass people here who will kill for the opportunity to do this shit. And y'all don't want to give them deals, but you'll give them a job. Definitely. And then close the door on everything they do after. Mm -hmm. You work for me now. So mm -hmm. it's like, damn, I can't even help y'all get busy and I can't go get busy over here. <laughs> Fuck. So even me, when I left, as I started building this, I was like, do I, why do I want a job? What do I like? What do I really want a job for? Like, you wanted, and it, you wanted the 401k? No. Health insurance? No. What you, wanna, you know what it was? I wanted to feel like I belonged. You have a community. We are <laughs> definitely a community. Now, <laughs> now, community. now, <laughs> but what I'm telling you is 10 years ago, right. it didn't feel like that. I get it. Them, you know, them OG niggas wasn't answering phone calls. Like, they was all running but behind you had, L.A. You moved to L.A. though, right? Hell no. You were at, when I met. When I've I never to lived life. in L.A. I've only, I've lived in you Atlanta my whole life. You were just spending time I was there? spending all my time there. Right. And then I started realizing. Was that because they had you there? Or you felt like you had needed to be there? Well, I, I was flying for A&R meetings. Mm -hmm. So when I worked at Indesco, when I worked at Warner, like when there was an A&R meeting, I would fly in for it. Right. Until, you know, so. But then I was in the meetings and we weren't playing music. So I'm like, why am I here for? Right. Yeah. Like, what the fuck are we doing here to talk about dates? We could do that on, on the Zoom. Like, my thing is, I'm a Virgo. I, I want to make life better. Like, that's how Virgos are. We perfect shit. So I'm just looking like, damn, they don't even have an interest in making it better. One day, Tom Corson, I say this, don't got to do with you. Tom Corson says some mafia shit to me, and he's like, yeah, you know, never anybody got a problem with it. And it wasn't nothing pro problematic. He was just saying to the employees, he was motivating them, like, hey, guys, I want you to do this for you. Do this for you. And I was like, that's the wrong messaging. Nobody's here for themselves. Everybody's here for the for you, for y'all. Like we want, mm -hmm. like, like think about it. If if the world, like you, AR is supposed to be behind the, the veil, right? We mm -hmm. send the artists to outside the curtain. Nobody knows about us anyway. So how the fuck am I doing it for me? <laughs> I can't, I can't go do a press run for myself. Mm -hmm. I can't say I did that. So how is it for me? It's for y'all. And we play for our coaches. That's why I say switch coaches so much. And I tried to tell him that. And it was like, he didn't want to hear it. And I was like, okay, no problem. Then it was like, damn, they don't really. So we don't really have problems. We just, we're not winning right now. And to me, it was just always like fucked up. But it's not my company and it's not my job. Maybe somebody that works for me might feel like I could run this shit better. So I'm not mad. It's just, man, why am I here if I can't help? Why am I, you know what I'm trying to say? Oh, of course. And, and to me. Optics. Hmm? You're there for optics. I don't. If I'm, go yeah, ahead. but I want to win. Like when this you're a natural born a... winner, it's different. When you just like, I want to put points on the board everywhere I go. Like, why am I putting points on the board at every single label? Like, we have a Cardi B single dropping Friday. Like, we just had Megan Thee Stallion's biggest pop song yeah. with Dua Lipa. Like, why am I not putting points where I'm at? Like, it's discouraging. It I got the number one song in the country right now. Right. Carnival. That was done by Digital Nas. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I got the number one song in the country. Like, I've had four since I left. It's not hard. I can help us. Yeah. But y'all got to listen or empower. Empower. Empower or get out the way and allow me to do it. And when I realized that that wasn't the goal, 
Like the greatest thing that happened to me. And by the way, it's hard. It's hard when you lose a check. It's hard. You used to that every two weeks. Then you lose that shit. And then what the other thing you realize you lose that I loved was I lost friends. Mm. Yeah. My phone stopped ringing. Niggas didn't call me no more, which really gave me time to think about what I want to do. Like, I didn't like that nigga anyway. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, why do I, I didn't like talking to that nigga anyway? That was just my job. Like, then you'd be like, nigga, I'm gonna go build my shit. I feel more powerful today than I've ever felt at any building because when I go out, people recognize me from this rather than reckon, celebrate me from a job. Because there's no worse feeling than getting celebrated for a job that you know has no power. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody throw your big party, and then and you know when they throw your party, you're gonna have 50 niggas like, Amina, I got this dope ass. And I'll be one of the nigga, I don't. <laughs> what do you want me to do? <laughs> well, no, no, he's dope. He's fine. Dog, all they care about is numbers. That's all they care about. Like, we're chasing numbers. We're not chasing talent. We're chasing numbers. And if it works, we do it. If it doesn't, we don't. And I'm saying this. I don't want you ladies to say this because you ladies are in position. But for me, I, as a nigga that cares, by the way, like, I love this shit, y'all. I love this shit. I care. But nobody Damn, my nigga, like, you got stars, nigga. I went to John Janik and told him when I worked at Interscope, what's it, Dash. My nigga, y'all know Dash? Yeah, we know Dash. Dash, yeah. was, Dash was like, yo, can you introduce me to L.A. Reid? And I'm like, of course. Why, though? He was like, bro, I, bro, I, I got to get out of here. I'm like, nah, nah, you good. I'm here now. He was like, yeah, Ray, but, like, they're not listening to me. That's every a and problem, by the way. <laughs> every a and problem is they ain't listening. So, I go to, so I'm like, why you don't talk to John Janik? He was like, he don't know me. I work on the Joey. Okay. I went to John Janik, knocked on his door. Hey, bro, we got a star A&R downstairs that's not happy. What are we doing? Let me help him. He wrote his name down on a piece of paper. I went downstairs. And by the time I was going downstairs, Dash was going upstairs. Why did, why they ain't let me stay there? First of all, I was doing what a team player would do, right? Mm -hmm. We got a great player. Let's not lose him. Correct. I don't get credit for what Dash did after they got him on play. Like, by the way, I didn't want that. I didn't want points and none of that. But my thing is, nigga, I'm showing you I'm a team player. I want to mm -hmm. win that bad that I'm like, yo, this nigga's yeah. a star. Give him a contract. They want, John Janik told him to hit him. He wound up signing Playboy Cardi. He wound up doing uh, Juice, uh, World. Uh, Juice World. Yeah, Juice yeah. World. All, and then he left and he had to come back and won over there. I'm like, nigga, he was a star when no one was listening. Mm -hmm. Y'all just didn't care. It's so weird to me. Now back to the interview. <laughs> <laughs> so it's hard being a woman. So how do y'all deal with A&R and men working with men males how do y'all deal with that like the disrespectful men like the ignorant niggas how do y'all deal with that you mean colleagues or you no, mean signing I'm, artists i'm talking about it all i'm talking about it all well i've been working with boys for 20 years and i love them implicitly they are my favorite we have i have a dope relationship with everyone gucci uzi Sleazy, Bear Hunter, Izzy. I don't have any problem with working with men ever, never. What's your What's your secret? Um, because you don't. By I the way, I think I'm. I think I'm like a super alpha. I'm almost a man if I had a penis. Hello. So I think I was waiting for somebody to say. I was, I was gonna say you kind of like a nigga, like yo, um, nigga, I don't play. I think that's probably why. You know what I'm saying? And with Gooch, we grew up like he's older than me, but we grew up like like his little sister. Yeah. Same thing with Thug. Same thing with Long Way. Like. I'm st I have s I'm so rough around the edges. I think that maybe that was it. But then I went to college. I graduated cum laude. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was just kind of like, Amina's like someone, she's like the smart person that can come and, you know what I'm saying? Like talk for them and have their best interests, but then still be in the studio with them and still be cool enough to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And still deal with your baby mother drama and all of that. Because you started shit. managing the girlfriends too, I remember. Like you didn't, yeah. you started with the models. Because so it's, it's a whole thing. I started with the, with girls like Buffy the Body yeah, and all sure. of that and um, I was doing casting for like Flavor of Love and all of those things Chance of Love and all of those things back in the day when that was a thing it was before IG so y'all ain't gonna remember but um, yeah and then I moved into working with the boys and Gucci was the first male I worked actually I worked with a Zen too. Well, his we called him Zen Q before Ivory Scott. Now you got him. Yeah. But yeah, he was one of the artists that I worked with at first when he was being an artist and yeah. a songwriter. But Gucci was my first person, and I'm still with him. Mm. And so everybody else that came. So how's it how for you? I mean, 
I'm not gonna. That's not my personality per se. Like, but I think for me, I just set the president. Like, I've come up around men. I mean, you know me since I was. I would say I've known you since you were like 18, yeah. 19. Okay. I've, you've never been. You've always moved. Can I ask y'all a question? Now I'm gonna let Melita go. Then I'm gonna ask a question. I want to ask you. Yeah, I think it's how you walk in a room and set the president. Like, I don't even give them room to play. Like, that's not what this is. Like, yeah. you don't respect me just like you respect the rest of these people in these rooms. So I'm proud of you. I'm yeah. like a nigga in heels. Yes. So, so I mean, no play. I'm very straight to the point. I'm honest. I'm transparent. Like my clients know, like, I, like you come with me with something, I'm going to cut your ass out and we'll be fine. Like yeah. we'll be good. We're always good. Like me and Parker, that's like my brother. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, oh, yeah. So, I mean, we have great relationships as far as like, I never, I never, I don't think I've ever been like super disrespected by like no artists mm. or no, no shit yeah. like that. No. I think men work better with female, like in tandem with females and because mm-hmm. there's no ego. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it doesn't benefit them to get buck and crazy with a woman. Like, what? Is, so now what? <laughs> and not, but not only that, right. you're you, you gonna beat me up. Like, you gonna beat me up you're like, like yeah. that. So I, I think that <laughs> it's kind of productive. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. what are you gonna do? Like, you're gonna get mad and I'm gonna shoot you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, yeah. like, what's, what's yeah. gonna happen? So I think that. I just think that it's a better. I think all male artists should have a female manager. But because I'm gonna tell you why. Well, go ahead. No, let me tell you why. Not only. By the way, I'm not taking no artists, so it ain't, this ain't a pitch, right? I'm, I'm, I'm at capacity. I don't need. Yeah. I, nah, I'm yeah. not. But what I, I'm Look. saying, yes, go to Melita. I can't do it. But um, I think it's because, and I'm gonna get a little, um, psychological here. Please. In our households, right? Black women are head of household. Yep. Mm-hmm. Period. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's like it's like clockwork for them. I agree. Like it's like I can have that conversation and they're not just like whatever. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like either either you're even if you're a big sister or a mother or an aunt or whatever, women have in black households have a very specific like who's gonna tell their mom shut the fuck up mom because no way but black folks no way no man (laughs) is doing that so it's like what so and they know we care at the end of the day yeah we care so it's the nurturing that they're used to interacting and taking instruction from women i agree period so i think that it's just easier and another thing that we don't talk enough about is that once a woman becomes a part of your team she doesn't have to be your girlfriend Mm -hmm. but once she cares about you as a man She's going, her, her, she can't allow you to be anything less than dope to her. Mm-hmm. Right. Like, nigga, I claimed you, nigga. I tell niggas I work with you, nigga. Do not wear those sneakers. <laughs> Do not, am I tripping? Like, hey, no, we're not, not doing you're that. Not. You're not talking, you know what I mean? Go no, ahead. You're, no, you're not. And I was just going to say with Amina, like, you were like the first woman manager I was around when I was coming up in the yeah. music industry. And the way you took over the room when you stepped in the room, I was like, what the yeah, uh, the people like they the stug days, you know. And, and, and if I'm being honest <laughs> with you, like, oh, God, if I'm being honest with you, there are way more. As far if there was a dope side, there are way more, like three, maybe four to one, women to men on the dope side in our industry. Like how many dope niggas you know? <laughs> no, like, you just, <laughs> I'm trying to say like like how many niggas you just want to get? Because you know once you give them that dope title. Even if he's a creep in another world, it's like, I can't give you that nigga. Like, <laughs> like how many dope, you can meet so many dope women because women know how to carry it. Men mm-hmm. don't like, that's my one problem I have with us is like, I mean, I, I was joking with Melita when I said that, but I was really just kind of like, that was my way of saying, man, you're a really pretty girl. Like, damn. And she was like, yeah, nigga, but, and I heard it loud and clear. And that's what made me fuck with her more. Cause it wasn't like that. It was just like, I just want to say you're dope. You know what I'm saying? But it's hard. It's whack ass niggas. Well, when Amina stepped in the room, there was nothing but respect. They shut up and listened. By the way, when Amina stepped in the room, and when all y'all step in the room, I shut up and listened. Because y'all are all fire at what y'all do. And it was the what I was going to say that I didn't want to like. Because, by the way, don't nobody get mad at me. This is me. The one thing I got to say about all three of y'all, and I know women are going to come at my head, but just let me say this. Y'all all dressed in a way that didn't sexualize you. See, this is where I exit the conversation because then I don't I don't care. Y'all can come to my... I, I comment back, so be careful coming on anybody <laughs> saying, like, saying weird shit. Like, people be like, oh, I'm so professional. I'm so unprofessional in that regard. So I'm going to say it. Like, I agree with you on that, right? And I know that pe- women always are going to say, like, oh, well, I should be able to wear whatever I want to and mm-hmm. this, this, that, and a third and blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. So now if I came in here in a full clown suit, 
I'm talking about like a clown, <laughs> like with a big red yeah. tie and fucking two shoes and blah, 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 right? And um, you call for a doctor. And I'm in the classroom. I should be able to wear whatever the fuck I want, right? Because yeah. I'm a doctor. I don't want your ass operating. Show me what's wrong. You were like, uh-uh, bitch. Uh-uh. <laughs> Bozo. That's a clown. Like, you are a clown. So I'm dressed up like, I'm like, but I'm a doctor. But, okay. like, but, but this is a business. Outfit, this is a business. Right? This is a business. But you got a clown outfit. That's how I feel. By the way. But by I'm a manager. Okay, well, you're dressed up like a prostitute. So but, you have a prostitute <laughs> outfit on. But I want to say what this. What the fuck is the difference? I agree. But I, by the way, she said it, and I wholeheartedly I agree. No, for real. No, for real. No, no, no. Cause you know what I say, Melita? You know what I say? I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, you have, like, I hate when people be like, they should be able to do whatever they want. With, with great power comes great responsibility. You cannot, like, and my thing is like, like Sammy, like like you guys are beautiful women, but men understand by how we present ourselves, how y'all present yourself. Oh, they about their business. You wanna know what's funny? Tell me. One day, me and Tech are very close friends. So one day I'm like, I don't like that. Everybody comments under my picture saying boss lady, boss lady. I'm like, I hate that. Like nobody thinks I'm pretty or nothing. He was like, no, like that's a sign of respect. Like yes. niggas not just trying to fuck you. Like they respect you. Yes. So I was like, dang, like I want people to say, oh, you look nice. Or, oh, you look pretty. I'm like, boss lady, boss lady, boss lady. You like, can, you can, you're, first off, you're beautiful inside and out. Thank and you. second off, like you can be, you don't have to be scantily clad of course. to be sexy. Right. I right. agree. Of course. I, I know a bunch of sexy women that, like, don't show it. Yeah, don't, don't, show need, it. don't feel the need. Not to. even that. Don't show it because it exudes. It yes. runs out regardless right. of whatever they have on because they're a sexy bitch. Right. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. sex, it's a creature. It's the way they move. It's the way they talk. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's a whole thing. So I think that that piece, and that's why I like people like Billie Eilish. Billie mm -hmm. Eilish is still sexy. I seen I all them titties yeah, and ass yes. through all them you, baggy shit. She, <laughs> I, was like, I seen it. Anyway, body is crazy. You know and don't crazy show. Don't use it whatsoever. Could make. Hundreds of millions of dollars on right. OnlyFans. I'm old white men to be like all over her ass. <laughs> look at what happened to Doja Cat. Nah, she yeah. used it. Now she's like, oh, I don't. No, don't look at me, please. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so you, I, I think that that's a misconception. Yeah, I know. It's, it, 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 to me, I feel like in today's market, today's world, it, it's almost like if you say it as a man, you're anti-women. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I would say the same thing to my sister. Right. I can't. I, like, like it's a, this is random. But it's a story that was in Atlanta where it was a girl. 25 year old girl with a 25 year old boyfriend. The boyfriend beats her up. Of course, she calls her dad. Her dad comes. They fight. The dad goes for the gun. The son, the boyfriend pulls out a gun, shot the son in the thigh. Yeah, this is like all over the news right now. Shot the yeah. son in the thigh, and the daughter kills the boyfriend. Oh, by the way, fucked up. Mm -hmm. We didn't even got to get into the situation, our thoughts. Point is, is baby girl, you should not deal with a nigga. That, put, that you think puts his hands on you mm -hmm. if you know your dad is coming with a gun. Because every day you lay down with that man, you're putting him and you and your man's life in danger. Because if a nigga touch my sister, <laughs> my daughter, I will gladly go to jail. No problem. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to ever go to jail. But I'm like, but damn sister, damn daughter, can y'all not put me in a position where I have to murder? And, and that's me taking it high level, but like, if my sister walks down the street with a thong on and a, sea, a fishnet on, baby girl, you're going to get girl, guys. Are gonna, I can't protect you because mm -hmm. I can't fight everybody. Niggas are going to nigga. The right. same way if a nigga walk in, the same way if an artist you had was like, wear a lot of jewelry. And he like, I'm going to the hood over there, the bluff. You're like, nah, bro. <laughs> your, your jury's off. That's how you protect them, yeah, right? Like, yeah. go, but your jury's off, right? Same thing as a man saying, baby, you're going to go, but put clothes on because the time niggas is this. everything. That's yeah. all I'm saying. And for yeah. me, I would love, I want to protect women, but I just feel like I can't speak on it. And by the way, you can speak on me. I don't care if y'all tell me don't do that. I would listen because y'all are women. Y'all see shit I don't see. I just think that we got to get a better working relationship with the black man and the black woman because how many black men are in jail right now because they, they killed somebody for a sister? It's been like that from the beginning of time. I know, but we, we got, but it's, it, they also used to uh, 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 like walk around and hit women on the head with bats and take them home. Just because it happened <laughs> don't mean it was right. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, how do we get better if we don't acknowledge what's holding us back? No, I agree. That's all I was saying. But yeah, like you can't put your, as women, you can't put yourself in a position where they will attack. If a guy attacked anybody up here or said anything disrespectful, you will have the entire Atlanta music business coming to their rescue. 
because y'all have never presented yourself like hoes or anything near it. But I think that, I, and, and let me clarify what I'm saying. I'm talking about when you're at work. Like, yeah. if you're going to yeah. use your Instagram for work, or you know what I'm saying, or your Facebook for work, I don't think that your Instagram should look like one of the girls, one of the mm-hmm. IG girls', girls Instagrams. Correct. Like, that's what I don't think. Now, if you, in your spare time, <laughs> taking a trip to Tahiti, for sure. and you want to, you know, hoe out, by all means, because you know what I'm saying? I'm with it's, the shit. It's me too. <laughs> How, however, I just think, like, professionally, I just, I personally don't think that that's appropriate. However, I think a lot of shit. So I'm not saying that that's right. If you want to dress like a hoe, by all means, dress like a hoe. But when all your artists trying to fuck you, then don't be surprised. Like, oh, my artist or this one's trying to do that. Well, or you ma'am. fuck them. And it's a way that, like you said, to be sexy without yeah. having a short skirt on or having your boobs out or having a see-through shirt on. Like, there's so many ways you men, be sexy Because men are perverts. Not men, even, no, not no, even no, for no. y'all, no, no, but I'm just I'm, for yourself. I'm, I'm just like, saying in general, like, a man will look through some shit. Like, we see, like... It's yeah. just when you dress a certain way, <laughs> we really see. And it's like you want us to look at you. But I'm saying a man can look and be like, okay. But at the same time, if you're not putting it out there, how can someone say something? But I know a lot of men and they actually find like it attractive. Like the fact that you, they can't have you. You know what I'm saying? That drives them insane. Mm-hmm. So really women, what we're, some women, right? What you're perpetuating is not even it. I remember I took Thug to, um, we went to Dubai, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Thug lost his mind. He was like, these women are, dr-. like, he was like, <laughs> this is dropping gorgeous. You know why? Because he was like, all I can see is their <laughs> eyes. Yep. Yes. And uh-huh. the shit, he was like, their eyes are so gorgeous. And their shoes, because he's a fashion boy. So he was just like, look at our shoes. And then look at our <laughs> eyes and shit. Like, he loved that. He yeah. thought that that was the most sexy thing. Yeah. And I remember at the time, his girlfriend at the time, he was like, why you don't wear that? Why you ain't got no abaya? Why you don't wrap your yeah. head up? Like, why don't you do that? Yeah. And he was just amazed by it, but only have been in Atlanta. He had never been exposed to that mm-hmm. kind of thing. You know what I mean? And he just thought it was amazing. Just like the president of my company, Aisha, Kadi. Yeah, I don't know yeah we know Aisha. Of course. Aisha, yeah, we know Aisha. her job Gorgeous. every day, blah, blah, blah. She's fully clothed. I mean, her body shape is ridiculous, so you're going to see it. But she's three-fourths of cloth, right? Yeah. And, like, men are obsessed with her. Mm. Like, everyone. Because there is a... You know what I'm saying? She's yeah. gorgeous. I mean, well, her face is pretty. To that. Yeah. She's gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. But there's an appeal to that. Like, you yeah. don't have to. And I want people to really know that because I have a 14 year old daughter at this point. So I really want Absolutely. women not to use their body as just a weapon Absolutely. or as a tool all the time, right? Because your brain works too. Because having a daughter changed me. Oh, yeah. No, like, my son, sense. I wanted to make sure I left my name good for him. Because I'm like, he going to use my name. He got mm-hmm. my name. My daughter, I was like, I got to leave the world better. Because I can't imagine her walking this earth and a nigga dis- like she's so perfect to me. It's like my so that made me want to be a better man to the world. I'm already a great man to her, but like that changed. She was born in 2017. That changed me. It was like mm-mm, no disrespect. That's why I, I love women. I just I want to see them thrive. I just as a man that will protect that protects mine. I hate when I see shit happening that could have been avoided. Mm-hmm. Like it could have yeah. been avoided. Like it's like. You can't allow that to happen, my nigga. Like, you gotta, as much as we gotta protect y'all, y'all gotta protect us. And that don't mean keeping a secret that you're getting your ass with at home. Yeah. That means leaving mm-hmm. and then telling them and then letting them do whatever they gotta do after that. But at least I ain't gotta beat his ass and see him next week right. <laughs> at the house. You know what I'm saying? Now, like, I don't know if y'all watched Godfather. That's how Michael got, uh, uh, the brother got killed in the Godfather. He was like, the, the boyfriend was a no good nigga. She loved him. He was beating her ass. And brother was like, no, nigga. I'm, and then they killed him. Yeah. Eventually. And it's like, now he's gone and she's still here to marry another nigga. What? <laughs> oh, no, baby. If I'm dying for you, we dying together. <laughs> your life is over. I got to end my life to make sure you could go. Your life, you ain't going to go living your life having fun now. Nah. Right. But yeah, I just see that. So I wanted to ask y'all, like, I have some questions written down. <laughs> I'm all, I've yeah, never done this before, like but I wanted I wanted my today. sisters to know. This is I out. respect y'all. I don't do this for niggas. They don't call for all of this, but I got a cue card. So I, <laughs> I feel action. stupid reading this shit. By the way, I just had to do that. I just, but not like what trends do y'all see emerging in the creative space with fe- being female led? Like, how do you feel about like female rap, female producers? Uh, female right like like that feels like there's a super emergence of women taking over the game and I disagree with Joe Budden I think it's just getting started Mm -hmm. I think that one chick that does that Lauren Hill love me care for me that uh, opens up the door for 10 more 
Oh, like imagine if Lauren Hill dropped in the Miseducation of Lauren Hill in 2024. Female, the whole scope of female music would be different. So I think that there's room for that. But how do y'all feel about the female creative ecosystem and where it's going? You're connected to you got. I know y'all two are connected to two big female rappers, Tate. All three of us. But I don't. I don't. Kelly. I know you, who Cali? Oh, yeah, I forgot Cali. So Ka, t- maybe yeah. Tate, Cali, and Coy. Y'all yeah. at the front line of breaking <laughs> women. How do y'all feel about this shit? Um, <clears throat> I know Koi's going to see this. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about my artist in particular is like, I just don't consider her like a rapper. I just, just I don't, don't blame you. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just, Koi dances, she sings. She's <clears throat> like a complete like thing. So I'm like trying to help her achieve becoming an icon. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So rap, I mean, I know it's like, rap is a genre, yeah. right? But hip hop is, so, it's blossomed into something so much bigger, yeah. right? That, you know, pop is just what? Popular music and mm-hmm. all of those Anybody things. Anybody can so, be that. Really it, right? Music. So that's all that. Because as soon as you, you notice like as soon as a rapper becomes bigger than what they want rap to be, then what do they become? Pop stars. Because Drake is pop. <laughs> yep. He's yeah, a pop star. Yeah. They think Nikki Future's pop, too. Pop they think Future's yeah. pop. So everybody yeah. becomes a pop star. So that's why I just don't like to pigeonhole it. But I think that um, there's so many great women that are coming up, these young women that are so different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because all of them are different. Koi, Lola, Callie, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Flo Millie. Like, all of them are, like, different characters. And the one time that we saw that before, yeah. remember when there was Rod Digger and Eve e- yep. and... Vita yep. and, and fucking everybody had a first no, lady, and Lady of Rage and yep. fucking Kim and yep. Foxy and there was mad women at one time. Yeah. Queen mm-hmm. Latifah, Light was still around. Yo yo, yeah. there was like ten. That's what it is right now. Yep. Yeah, but they all coexisted. Yes, you know what I'm yeah. saying. Like we had the ladies' night Night yep. mm-hmm. We had those other. Things we need another called. one. We just don't. The girls now. Which I hate is fucking social media. Um, social, social media yeah. is a devil for a female artists. <laughs> it is absolutely because women are different than men. Men will be like, I don't give a fuck what this nigga said. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But a woman, they be on that shit like. What they say? What they say? Well, listen, Let me read listen. This when women do this with their nails, when they because they, they got nails, when they do this right here, <laughs> when they put that finger on and start doing it, it's like <laughs> oh, yeah. zooming in. They zoom in, and <laughs> you know, you know they got nails. So men do like this. Women do like this. Yeah, and, and I think I think that it's so counterproductive for a female. And I know all of them is like that because I, mm-hmm. I, even yep. if I don't know those two girls personally, I know it yeah. because yep. of their age and because they're in the social media realm. Yeah, it's yep. fucking terrible. Yeah. That's why Doja's always disactivating her page. That's why Koi was like, ah, I'm taking my page off of yeah. Cardi. Always it's yelling. Cardi yep. does it. Like all of them do it. Meg, you see, fucking Nikki's away from her thing, right? Because. It's like fans and people now are so toxic because you're desensitized. I can scroll on the internet, see a nigga get his head cut off, see a smiley face, and see the cuddly picture of two cats, and be like, well, I done went through 32 emotions in one second. And so yes. now I'm desensitized. Now I don't give a fuck if I see a nigga blow a baby's head off at this point, because yeah. then, then the next thing is going to be my favorite artist. I'm like, oh, oh shit, so I mean, you forgot. It, that's yep. fucking crazy. Crazy yeah. as fuck. Right? So I think that that's the biggest fucking issue with young female artists now is the fucking internet. And, 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 and to me, I'm going to say this, don't be mad. Mm-hmm. I think women's natural state is, is to want to be with a man. Like, I think if you ask a man, I give you a billion dollars, but you never have a family, you never have kids, you could just live your life, you're going to be like, hell yeah. A woman would be I like- I disagree. <laughs> women want husband. No, let me tell you why I say that. Hear me out. Maybe now, Melita, challenge, I'm, I'm a, so a billionaire man walks in here, hear me out, a billionaire man walks in here and- when he leaves, every man is like, he's single. Every man is like, man, he good. I want to learn from him. A billionaire woman walks in here. First thing they say is, when she leaves, she ain't got no man. Is she even happy? Does she have a husband? I think women judge each other so hard. And to me, if it's one thing I wish I could stop, is that. Oh, yeah, because no, it's like if she wants other. to be a hoe, yeah, let her yeah. be a hoe. She wants to be a wife. I thought you meant ju- I thought you meant man specifically. That's why I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. The judgment part. Yeah, I'm, t- I'm talking about like women yeah, judge sure. each other. Like, yeah. and it's like, yeah. it's, and it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like I did a deal with Republic because I love Jacqueline Saturn, mm-hmm. right? Not Republic. I'm sorry, Capital. Caroline, Caroline, mm-hmm. Caroline. Oh, Caroline. Okay. Caroline. I did a deal with Caroline because, by the way, I had three deals on the table, mm-hmm. but I came to an event that my ex assistant Kate did, and Jacqueline goes up there and says. I ain't gonna lie, it made me tear up because I'm like, as a man, I 
That felt good to hear. She was like, I used to be a, I'm a woman. I used to be a secretary. And I was told I ain't going to be able to have a husband. I ain't going to be able to have kids. I ain't going to be able to have success. And I got all three young ladies. Mm -hmm. And she said, my goal is to make sure every woman at this company has the same fucking experience. Yeah. I love this woman now. Like, because you know what I'm Because yeah. women should be able to allow to come in the workspace, be mothers, live in their femininity, and still be successful. And to me, that's going to start when women encourage it. I think now it's a safer space, right? Like, one, I don't post my child on social media, but everybody's aware that I have a child. Of course. It's not a secret. Yeah. Um, but I feel like the conversation is us being vulnerable with each other right yeah. like even when i just seen genevieve when we were at the billboard of music event and we're like i'm like how are you feeling do you have mom guilt like how are you you good yeah. like i was like and i even told her like uh, god forbid but i mean well god forgive me but i was like when i first left you know my two days i was like i forgot about my baby for yeah, a second because you, you was in the work no, <laughs> yeah but, but not even you, that but i'm like oh my god i feel a little free yeah, today oh, you yeah, know got you. and she was like oh my god i feel the same way i'm like yeah. see so once you get that vulnerable space with each other i feel like it'll be more it is accepting though it i mean we're all accepting it now i feel like now more people want to be moms but like you said it all starts with boundaries like once yeah. we put those boundaries in place we're good yeah is that and then, oh i'm sorry oh, no i was just gonna say i think before like just coming up it felt like you well if you yeah you had to choose you want your career you want to have a family and a child mm -hmm. and a husband and it's like why can't we have both because men have both yeah and it's never frowned upon and nothing's ever said but with a woman it's like you got to sit, well, you're going to be pregnant for nine months and you got to sit down for a few months and you're not going to be able to be active. And I've seen so many moms like mm -hmm. really turn that around and set the president in the world. It's, well, I'm just going to speak to the music for industry. Sure. Like that you can do it. When yeah. I told Aaron I was balance. pregnant, I was seven months pregnant. I, I waited the whole time. Yeah. So I'm going to meetings. Nobody know I'm pregnant. So I was like, let me just do the Zoom with Aaron, right. you know, because they're based in LA. I'm like, I'm scared. He just had a baby. And I said, Aaron, I'm pregnant or whatever. He's like, how many months are you? I said, seven. He said, what? Oh, my God. You're going to be so good. I? And I was like, oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. But, his, but guess he, what? His wife. Yeah, his wife, wife works in the music business. Works in the music business. And, business. Yeah. and, that's yeah. what, and I, I was about to go there. I was about to say, the minute that my girl started working close with me, I saw females and their experience different. Yeah. I didn't, you know, because I, I believed in the same old gender roles. And then I was like, nah, it's, that's nobody better. And then me, I don't have dad guilt. Mm -hmm. Dad guilt to stand at home on your ass not doing it. That's what it's like. I got to go out and do something for my family. That's dad guilt. But yeah. when you're working, you don't have dad guilt. So when I seen it, I'm like, I just think that this world can be so much better going forward. I see husband and wife CEOs, co-CEOs. I see all that happening. And to me, I think what makes it happen faster is if women stop judging each other. Because as a man, like, it's like how men was with gay men. Like, oh, you gay? Like, it's like now it was a gay rapper. It's like, who gives a fuck? Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we don't judge each other. So I feel like when women just kind of be like support privately and publicly, I think the future is female. I've been saying that. Like, my executive producer right there is a girl. Like, I live, when I'm She's done, a woman. I don't go to yeah, Aaron. She's a woman, woman, not a girl. Woman. woman. <laughs> I, somebody told me don't say certain words. Somebody corrected me on the show and was like, don't say female because that's the action noun of this and don't say one. So it was like. I mean, she's not a girl. She's yeah, grown. A girl she is a woman. woman. She's a woman. But I feel like women. Okay, let me ask y'all. Okay. Let's go there then. <laughs> Let's stop. I like that y'all corrected me. But like when you introduce yourself to a woman and you like, how you doing, miss? Miss, that's my mama. I'm, a, you know what I mean. So it's kind of like, what yeah. do you want? What do y'all want to be referred to as a woman? A woman. The, okay, woman. Yeah. So if I say I, she's a woman. Yes, she's a woman. Not I a girl. thought that was the most obvious thing, so I didn't know that it felt. It felt like I girl shouldn't say that. Feels Girls like, like a, a young, yeah, really, yeah. I, but I, like, don't y'all want to feel eighteen, nineteen? <laughs> you can feel eighteen, nineteen without being called a girl. How do you do that? How can I make you feel young? Call you young lady. I'm just, I'm just asking. Hey, young lady. Basically. And he be like, bitch. I'm fucking 30 with a kid. I ain't no motherfucker. So it's kind of like, I don't know what to say. By the way, this is why I like doing this. Because we should have more conversation. Like what people don't know about black people is that we are the first generation. Whoever was in the 80s from the, not even the 80s. You had to be of age in the 90s. The 90s is the first time we saw generational wealth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like we didn't see that in the 80s Like we saw that in the 90s So you had to be a certain So 2000s, 2010s We had a chance to mature Now with adults We want generational wealth That right. wasn't around back then That wasn't It wasn't a goal It was like Everybody was trying to survive So I think we should give each other a pass Like when we talk about 50-50 on bills And people are like Why are we having this conversation The reality is Because we uh, Dads was in, on the drugs in the, on, in the 70s And moms was on welfare mm -hmm. Like we the government took care of everybody. Now that we got moms working, guys working, we kind of figuring out, so is all the money come from my account? Uh, do I, 
I'm just asking. I don't know. Like, I'm just trying to figure it out. So that's why I, I'm even nervous asking the question. All the niggas are kind of like, Rondo. So for I us, mean, it's kind of like. That, how's that at your house? Huh? How is it at your house? <laughs> <laughs> Do you pay 50% of the I, bills or you pay 100%? Listen, I pay 100% at my house, at my mother's house where my sister lives. I pay. Every, but my thing is, I still get king treatment. I don't mind it. You ain't going. I ain't going to pay. You act like you get king treatment. I'm not going. I do. I don't. I don't. I, I, don't, Thank I you, baby. definitely don't doubt I, that. I do. But when I'm. But I'm, I got to get treated like. I don't mind being. I will do what the king does if I'm treated like a king. But if I saw my girl online talking about. And fuck all that. Because these niggas. These niggas what? <laughs> you want to shut your motherfucking ass up. I'm going to be like. This shit, is, shit is good. But my thing is. Is that. I'm a different type of nigga. Yeah, you are. My mom raised me. My, <laughs> my mom fucked me up, y'all. My mom, now I'm being honest with you. My first paycheck was when I got paid, my mother, I went to Greenbrier Mall, bought some clothes, called my mother, like from the pay phone, like, yo, ma, just letting you know, I got paid. She, my mom was like, where you at? So I'm like, I'm, I'm at Greenbrier. I'm on my way home. I'm thinking she concerned about me. My oh, mom said, like, you got paid today, at? nigga. Right. I'm 16. You got paid, nigga. I hope you didn't spend your whole motherfucking check at the mall. And I did. <laughs> so now I got two of my partners with me. And, I'm, and we walking back to Burlington Coke Factory because my mom was like, how much was your check? I said, $142. 50 of that comes to this motherfucking house. Mm -hmm. Nigga, I had to take $50 and get 50 cash and take the money home. Now... And by the way, when I was 16, I, I couldn't stand her for that. But I'm 44 now, and I take care of everything. And when people come and see all the shit I take care of, they're like, how do you do this? Mm -hmm. I'm like, nigga, my first check, I got taken. I don't even know how to make a dollar without thinking about half taking it them. home. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, it's like I live off the half of the check that's mine. Right. And I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. But my mom trained me like that. My yeah, mom's a straight New York Bronx. Yeah. If you got a dollar, nigga, I need 30 cent of that shit, nigga. Cause <laughs> yeah. I, cause, and that was how my life was. So <laughs> I get money now. Like I bought some. I bought this chain yesterday. I'm there. I got to make sure I buy uh, another one. I'm like, <laughs> shit. And then I call my fucking six-year-old daughter. Look at daddy chain. Uh, you bought jewelry? You got me something? Right. I'm like... <laughs> No. <laughs> Hell no. Why would I do that? She said, so hold on. Mommy gets roses and jewelry the same week and I get nothing, dad. <laughs> Nigga, I was like, she's right. right. I literally sent the flowers. My daughter gets flowers Friday. Right. I, cause, but that's training. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, y'all gotta train niggas while working that's a hard that's a whole nother conversation cause you know when you're working you be like when you get home to your nigga you wanna be a girl no nigga you still need to ask him what he did and where he going cause men are, ain't shit now because women have stepped up so much I don't I don't agree that's, I, don't, I don't think that all men ain't shit I ain't say I all men I agree with that I don't, I don't think that I ain't um, say all men but I'm saying we can honestly say nigga I, I posted a clip of this girl on my pod on Instagram. It went viral. I put, oh, I think of, I of, of Lyrica. Yep. You know how disappointed I was in men for saying, ha ha, finesse the ass, got the pussy, and didn't do. And I'm like, why do y'all wanna see women fail so bad? Like, nigga, I don't wanna see a woman lose. But look how much energy you had to put into doing just that thing, right? Like, you had to go get a car, <laughs> put a bow on it. <laughs> Fly her in here. Well, she flew herself. Well, she up flew here. herself. Yeah, which yes. is crazy. <laughs> crazy. Sorry, but <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Took a picture in front of it and then toyed with her all this all this time, right? When she's actually a talented woman, but you could have really made money for real. Boom. So you missed the whole point. Boom. And that's my point. These new niggas, it's like everybody finessing each other. And, and to me, but like who raised them? I don't get it. I don't even. You think, messed I, up the longevity. I don't think, I don't think, I don't think, they, I don't think they mom raised them. I think <laughs> the internet them? raised them. Because the internet has, we Both see women, I'm not going to lie to y'all, we do see, every time you get on Instagram, there is a woman living her best motherfucking life. Right. You got to search for the men living their best life. You know, you might get one here or there, but you feel bad for the nigga. Like, <laughs> like Simon was on the boat and people comment, when do you work? Like, nigga, nobody comments at the women. A woman is like, I want her life. But man is like, what are you doing? So for me, I just feel like we got to give each other more grace. We're in a new time space. Black love is at the forefront. R&B is at the forefront. And I feel like we finally get into this. I feel like the best thing that happened was rap going down. Because now they don't want to invest in it. Now it gives us a chance to get our shit together. I missed R&B. I'm glad that I'm, it's, I'm it's so glad the resurgence of R&B. Because maybe then everyone will 
be in love because now because yeah. yeah. now Shoot it's like the music bang, bang. everybody want to be like y'all want to be gangsters so bad yeah. like y'all really ain't grew up in the you know being with real no real gangsters because all the real gangsters I know ain't on the internet I'm about to say mm. why are you on the internet first none of them foremost. none of them have Instagram pages Facebook pages <laughs> none of they them. don't want you know, nobody to know their name their real person. name so, they don't so, even use they never use their social security <laughs> number ever, ever. in their life you know they what CPN saying? dog they got fifty CPNs on deck if anybody needs so um yeah I'm I'm encouraging that um that that love era comes back a good r&b song like you yeah. know what i'm saying like i want like a silk group yep. like you know what i'm saying like one yeah. of those like real silk like, sonic crazy like some real shit but um i i don't know when that's gonna happen no i, th I, I think, mean it's I, coming i, I but, think it's happening now i but think the r&b still be still like yeah but i'll kill this nigga in the love song like i don't want that <laughs> I who says that? Who's, who's somebody is an RB nigga say saying he gonna no, kill a nigga? Saying, no, no way. I ain't not, heard that shit not, yet. It's not a nigga. I'm talking about the females. Oh, okay, gotcha. You know what I'm okay. saying? It still be like too, a little rough around the edges. It's still rough around the edges just because of where we're at. Yeah. It's not like vulnerable. Real, vulnerable, and, vulnerable yeah. Like, yeah. like Superwoman. Wasn't that that song early oh, yeah. in the yeah, it yeah. That. yeah, it's more like why you know, all okay. the weird shit. I didn't start this, do. but I got a great. I got a segue. I'm why don't? Saying, why don't? Why don't? Why? don't why, why, like this when's the last time? Why don't we have yeah. women being vulnerable in music? Like, I like the last woman to apologize on the song was Anita Baker in the eighties. Like the last woman to just flat out say I fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so I knew I, I was wrong. Baker. That's why I'm singing this song. Yeah. Like it's like thank but you for you that. But did you actually listen to Victoria Monet's EP? Yeah, she, yes. you listen yeah, to the whole has, thing. Some, yeah. But Victoria Monet, that's the it's an age thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's yeah, older. Yeah, she's older. older. Yeah. she's an older woman. Because these new, they're, I mean, look, look what the little girls <laughs> got experience. Yeah, with these guys. Like look what they got experience. Like you be a little bit mad in your songs. Like the R and B songs. Like if you listen to it, it sounds sweet. But then you're like, wait, what? Yeah, what you saying? I'm gonna do Y'all be like, come in late and see what's gonna happen. Like, oh, what? What you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I miss like that real like being in love kind of thing because I I'm a fan of love. Me too. I, love I mean, it. I would I never get love, married, yeah. but I'm a fan of it for other people. I love to go to people's weddings. So anytime, y'all. Oh, wedding crash. Wedding crash. I no, I don't crash. But I mean, I, I love weddings. I love the idea of love. Why don't you want to get married? Me personally. Yeah. Um, I don't want to bring the government into my relationship. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's I feel some real like, Jamaican shit right there. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Every Jamaican American is like. I feel like if I'm in, I know people that have been in love and have been in relationships their whole existence. Yeah. And die together, 80, 90 years old. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the paper is going to, like, what the paper, now, what is that relevant? Now, right? now, now it's, it's, this is off music subject, but I have three smart women here who all have, have dealt with men. I know. Not Sammy, but I'm, I know she's sneaky enough. I know she got one somewhere. <laughs> she got one boyfriend, some engineer boyfriend around here somewhere ain't who ain't, who ain't going to even know. He ain't an engineer. See, I'm a leader. He got my name. No, I'm just like, <laughs> I, I, like on some real shit, on some personal shit. I, I posted this question on Instagram and I'm asking you guys because I respect y'all. Why do black women in particular take marriage more serious than they take who they have kids with? I always oh, no, say I this. That, yeah, no, I don't I play that. that like, I feel like whoever I had kids was more important than who I married. You can leave a marriage. Yeah. You, you can't leave a child. Well, you, you can't, can't leave a child. But Thank you. you. you really I mean, niggas do leave a I'm sorry to laugh at that. My bad. But They've been doing it for some <laughs> But not like, you're not supposed to leave a baby, right? But you, <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, like she said, a marriage is a piece of paper. So you, I can go to the courthouse. We can get that divorce and call it a day. But a marriage, I mean, a child, we here forever. Yeah. I literally it's just saw years. on Twitter... This lady, she was having a seizure after she had her baby. This is her first seizure ever. And now she continuously has seizures. So just imagine you putting your life on the line for a child, for a man who don't even respect you, like you, whatever. Like, So I think we also have to think about like actually having kids, like making it more important than what it really is because it's not a game. Like This is a whole human being. Yeah, and then and, and go ahead. I, I, I think it's the way you ha have children. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I don't think that, well, not every. Most black women I know did not plan to get pregnant by this person. They're not. But, but right. you went in knowingly having sex with that person, mm -hmm. right? Without, without protection. Right, without protection. So it can be argued that you did know that you have a chance to reproduce with this person. Yes. Right? It can be argued that. <laughs> However, the way babies are made... It's like you not you're not thinking moment. about that shit. You're in a like, moment. Not thinking like, yeah, you know. Yeah, but I when, but, but if his parents have cancer in their background, but, I wonder but, if he's that sick assault. I, lo I love not, that you said not. that. Like, you're not thinking that at the moment because if that were the case, nigga, it would be an audition line around the corner. What's, what was your? Did you go to college? Um, what was your GPA? Um, yep. You have sick assault trait. What's your blood type? But some people is know before they even lay in the bed with the person. You know what I'm saying? I'd have to. I would have asked. But my thing is this. 
But you don't ask, if a nigga want to marry you, you're going to ask those questions. No. No, if, you mar- if a nigga want to marry you, you, nobody just marries a nigga. Like, baby daddies come, the, the, the criteria is way lower for baby daddies than it is husbands. Yeah, we, I, we agree. It is. I agree. It is. It is. That's I agree. what I'm saying. And, but, but it's because of the act of which, like, when you go to marriage, you're going to Babies not her. always about love, Correct. but marriage is. Right. Exactly. But and, and babies, babies are accidental are, sometimes. But babies, <laughs> babies are accidental. Yeah. I love that. That's you know a viral moment. Babies are accidental. No, I, I mean, the creation <laughs> of it. I'm saying the creation no, no, of I get it. The decision is very. You know, it's very intentional, right? Yeah. But the act, right, to that get you. I just to wanted to get me some. Now I got a whole. And then there's, there's that's a, my <laughs> point. Get you some, some protection, so but we can leave. Women just want to have a baby. That's that's a thing. Yeah, that is a thing. But then my thing is this: then, then if you just want to have a baby, then have a baby from the nerdiest nigga you could find, and get those jeans. Like you said, if it's because a lot of these, because a lot of these, because a lot of this shit is men ain't shit. They fuck them. They have babies with them. Like, I, I use, for example, like, if you pay attention to the Sierra Future thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, if you're on the future side of it, you like, that's, some, that's, her, that's her dad. That's his son, mm-hmm. right? But if you a woman, you like women. When Russ said, I feel like God told me to take care of that. As a man, I felt the fucking way. Why? Hey, man, hey, man, you- as a man, I felt mm-hmm. the way. Because that's my son. But women were like, that's so beautiful. By the way, everybody is right. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying Russell was wrong. Everybody was right, but it's a child still involved, and it's still an order, and that's why. I, so my mind is like, why wouldn't you take the the man that you have kids with as serious as you consider? Why wouldn't you take the same consideration who you have kids with or who you fuck raw as in you would take who you marry? That's only my only question. I, 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 think, I, will, I think I would too, because my baby father, even though we're not together, is literally my best friend on planet Earth. You got like, lucky. I, I think that he is the epitome of what a great father is and all sorts of other things you know what i'm saying like but he wasn't made to be my partner in life I love him, and yeah. in bank account for the rest of my life. <laughs> you know what i'm saying but like he is a great father and I, i'm i couldn't pick a better person to have reproduced with i've known him my whole life but that's that but so that's then you great. also said i don't want to be married but if you're mm-hmm. a woman that wants to be married, mm-hmm. that wants to be a wife, then why would you want to bring in a kid from another man that was a fuck up to a good man? Wait I mean, till you get the good man. I mean, you're not thinking of all of that, though, because some people expose themselves later on, too. Like, that's you know true. But, that's what, but, but, what I'm saying yeah. is, but what I'm saying is, Melita, like, if I meet a girl, like, okay, let me ask y'all both a question. Like, all three of y'all a question. Let's say y'all are single. When y'all meet a man, y'all don't show him your bank account day two. No. Y'all do what? Show him your bank account. I don't give a five years. No. I'm not showing him my bank account. So, okay, let's stay there. Oh, no, never. Absolutely let's stay there. See how y'all, I love that. Let's stay there. So you mean to tell me you're not going to show him your bank account day two, but you're going to let him fuck without a condom day two? Who said Nigga, I was doing that I'm either? not saying you. I'm not saying you. I was just asking <laughs> women, like generally speaking, like when you were, when women and coins come up, y'all don't play. Melita, you turned into a motherfucking Melita the mogul when I said five. I'm going five years. You know what I like? You that's you being protective over your bag. I feel like you should be the same protection over your ovaries and who you allow to post a baby in there because. That, but I picked a great baby daddy. You did. So I'm great. No, no, but My that's baby why. Is but that's why you, fun baby. We are good. But to that's know. why I respect you because you went with a solid. By the way, I was I saw him a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and. He was like a different person. And I'm like, damn, Melita's really like rubbing off. Like I did. He was just so like, he, mm-hmm. that wasn't a normal Chris. I was like, damn, I like, I really like this nigga. Mm-hmm. I could tell he has a woman in his life because we instill confidence in each other. We don't admit that. Mm-hmm. We, you give me confidence as a man. I give you confidence as a woman. We, we need each other. But it's just, we don't need the babies though, y'all. <laughs> Literally, because the one well, yeah, thing I think we we are waiting to have kids, right? Like I, I'm what? How old am I? Thirty two, yeah. and he's thirty nine. You get what I'm saying? We have a one year old, yeah. So we waited a very long time, and this is both of our first child, so it's different. It's not like, I yeah. mean, and even y'all if have it a does house have together, because, yeah, yeah, have a life like, together, yeah, life together. y'all are married but even, basically. But I'm not gonna judge. We just had this conversation before you came in, actually. Like, but I'm not, who am I to judge a woman who have, have have a teen pregnancy? My mother was a teen mom. She had three kids by twenty years old. However, I turned out great. Now I can take care of my family. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Same I can thing take with my mom. Care my mom had three kids at 24 that's what she said, and a project. Give me that 50 dollars. That's why I get that guy. By the way, I wish she waited 10 more years. She might have had a career and been like, I don't need nothing. But who? Right. T- how what I would have been? So I take. I would have been. You know what I'm saying? So I'll take that. But I just. No, let me tell you something. I love us. Mm-hmm. Like I study other cultures and I see. Like I, I got a white friend and I asked him the straight up question. I was like, Where do white men come? 
The nigga looked at me like, what the fuck do you mean? And I'm like, no, but where do y'all come? Because we know where black men come. That's why we have so many baby daddies in our community. But where the f- y'all don't have that. And he was like, Yes, oh. they do. He, no, he, let me tell you what he, he said. He said, in our community, white community, as soon as we get an inklet that she's fucking, she's on birth control until she's a wife. Yeah. Until uh, we get an inklet that you fucking, mm. you on birth control until you get until you that get married. Sense. And to me, I think that's a great. I agree. I, I would love that because we are all we are, we. I, I don't know. You probably you in your thirties yet? Yeah. So we are all grown, grown, right? And we see the world way different now because we're grown. We know mm-hmm. the mistakes. We know what right. And for me, it's like I know that what helped me get here was not having a kid because I couldn't imagine having a kid out there and I'm. Chasing my dream, passing out flies for fucking twenty one dollars a night. So mm-hmm. when I make it, I'm, I can't. I can't imagine that. I would have went and worked at McDonald's for mine, but that's why I ain't make none. That's why I didn't have none because I was like, I want to get on my feet first. It's like you ever seen the movie This Is Forty? That's one of my favorite I love movies. It. It, you should watch it. It's one of my favorite movies. Mm-hmm. But it's about a, a white man and his wife, and he's an ex music exec, and now he's trying to figure it out while. She's going through her medical things and then, you know, all this shit. And then, but the point is that the kids are like seven and 10. It was honest. No, That's, no the kids were older because she had a teenager. No, the kids, no, but no, but like, no, yeah, I forgot. She had like a 13 year old. But mm-hmm. the point is, is that I know some 36 year old grandmothers in my community. No, a thousand mm-hmm. percent. You see what I'm trying to say? My so grandma we, was 36. We don't get, but my grandmother was too. We don't, but we got to give ourselves mm-hmm. the opportunity to flourish, yeah. to blossom. Mm-hmm. And then make babies. Yeah. And instead of making them when you're 21, I don't want, I wish the father had a 23 year old son. What? What the fuck I'm supposed to do with him? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm still triggering my shit out. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, like, nigga, I don't know what to tell you. You're 23. You need to know something. My 15 year old, though, is different. It's my dog. So I just feel like <laughs> black, the one thing hurting black, the black community from flourishing completely is just kind of like, let's stop making babies until we start making marriages or not making marriages, but finding someone who has the same career. We be fucking raw. Don't even know what you want out of life. Mm-hmm. We right. just know we want a nut and we want to feel it. So we're going to do that. But then we don't know what the fuck you want. And now we got a baby. Now we got a life together forever forever mm-hmm. and then and by the way every time he comes up you go you take him outside oh that's your son oh where the father now, i got an you know what i mean like i know he was there <laughs> right yeah. you can't tell me you're a virgin you can't tell me shit i right. know <laughs> what's that so i just see like i just want that was that's the segue i just feel like our community would be better if we stop making babies make don't make if we made the rule in our community don't make babies to you in your career Man, we'll get so fucking far. But there's no way in the world a 16-year-old, 17-year-old, 18-year-old, our parents did it, it's different. But I'm not going to lie. Like, when you are, of course, all the fun is out the way now. Like, when you have your baby in your 30s, you already done been to the club, you done did all of that. However, and you, when you're in the middle of your career, like, when you're like, damn, I'm about to go on another run. Like, even, like, that's what me and Chris discuss all the time. Like, damn, like, you about to sign a new contract. You have mad shit going on. Like, we're about to go on another run. Then it's like, damn, now we got a one-year-old. Not saying, and, you know, no, our, no. our son is well taken care of. But it's just like... I'm like, shit, I need to leave the studio. I need to go see my baby before he go to bed and blah, 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 all these different things. So sometimes people are like, shit, I don't want to stop what I'm doing yeah. to even have a baby. Yeah. Or you shouldn't. But, but, that's, but my <laughs> thing is this. But my thing is if you do. No, I'm, not talking about, I'm talking about like stopping their career. Not no, no, when, but they, I'm saying, not, you, not no, when they actually no, have the actual baby. But, yeah. I don't think that they should. But I, I, think, I think they should. But I think that, I think that in, in the 90s, maybe not. But today you can. Because if somebody worked for me, like if, if, Somebody worked for me, bought their kids to work. I don't feel no way about it. Right. Because mm-hmm. my son and my daughter will run around this motherfucker office every day. And who going to say something? They mine. Right. So I'll be a fucked up nigga. My baby can come, right. but yours can't. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I think today we can. But I do think that I was thinking you was going to go to the place of like, okay, do we want more kids? Do oh, no, I'm not having grow- no more kids. That's the, that's the thing. Why like, I'm not, not having no more. Why I don't, not? I just. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having no more kids. I'm one and done. I just feel like, like, I'm like. I don't know how to describe it. This is gonna sound so crazy. It's not. Like, you know how like you have that mom mom. Like, I was just saying, like, my little sister has no like biological kids, but she takes care of my little cousin who's four. And then my son and her are like besties, right? Like my son will go to her like easily. Yeah. And I'm like, she makes the heart pancakes and cut up the shirt. I'm not doing all that not shit. Doing that are shit. you hungry or not? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, so I'm like, I'm just not that. Like, I'm a career driven woman. Like, I love being a mom, but I love being me. Like, yeah. I love being. You don't want to lose you. So yeah. You, you don't think that your son is going to be lonely? 
Oh no, he my four year old, uh, four -year -old, his four year old cousin lives with us. So they're like literally brothers. That's good. Okay. Yeah, so they literally like all they grow up that together. They literally like he waits for him to get off the bus. Oh, that's my he calls him my, my son calls his cousin Barbara. Barbara. Okay. Yeah, that's fire. So he's good. Listen, he's good. His cousin's with us. Only time, only time it comes up when Chris says he wants more. Then no, Chris like, doesn't want anymore. Perfect. He doesn't want it because he, it's not easy having a baby. Perfect. It's not that, easy. That, I, I, by the way, kudos to you, and I do think that more people should wait because even now you understand the weight mm -hmm. when you 19 and you ain't got no career you just really want to love that child right mm -hmm. it's like oh my god i want to love it but when you 30 you understand the weight of that life you know what i'm trying to say so yeah. you see so now you like i can't just be out here messing around with all these girls and having kids because I don't want my kid to grow up without me around. Yeah. So you got. So I think that that's another thing. You we got to get my niggas. Don't let nobody. You got to be twenty one to drink. You know what I'm saying? Like you got to be twenty five to get a CDL. Like we, you know what I mean? Like you can't motherfucking. Be, we gotta make a rule. You gotta be twenty five <laughs> with a career to have a baby or something. Because it's like that shit ain't cool. But some man. people are good at just being moms. Like, that's that cool. Then find thing. a find a man that's great at working <laughs> that wants yeah, that and then be that, with him. That white lady. She's a model, I think. She was on the shade room the other day, and she was like making cereal. Oh, no, yeah. Like, like, I'm not Nora. doing that. I, just heard about I her. love that for her. I was like, I want you to come to my house and be my wife and <laughs> yeah. make cereal from yeah, scratch. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But we All think that. differently. Like, she made a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. She like literally from scratch. No, I, I, I saw she her. Made cereal from and, and, I, and, for, and that's she weird. She was in Houston. But the weird part like about that. it is that she's only 22. Yeah, but the husband. She was made to be a wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She found the right husband. Yeah. And now, boom. Some women they make. Some women are made to be career people. Some people like we don't talk enough about that yeah. I, I had that conversation with Chris like oh what if I took off work and I'm like obviously I'm straight I still yeah. have like management but I'm, he was like you'll be depressed yes. like yeah, you if you did. really had nothing to do you would probably go crazy I know but I, would. I love just giving to people I love watching people come from nothing and just their whole lives change and all of our lives change right as managers yeah. like we're getting commission off of this stuff yeah. so it's just like watching that like and knowing that you're a part of that it's just it just change your perspective and you just fall in love with they're it they're your babies mm -hmm. they're your babies too like I, I like I don't like I remember Teron like just be like I just want a chance and this, they it's like that's like mm -hmm. my like I know I'm his we like brothers but like the nature of the relationship is like yeah. father son I'll fucking kill a nigga that like if he mad I'm mad it's different yeah. you know what I'm saying I but I, by the way, I appreciate that. I wanted to ask y'all a question. So there are a lot of people that watch this show, dreamers who have dreams and watch it. I think a big problem with the new world is that people don't recognize opportunity. They don't recognize the opportunity. They, they think, they don't see, they, they see money. The only thing that matters is money. Like, mm -hmm. they don't see opportunity. What was y'all first opportunity that was a game changer for y'all so I could just let people see how y'all view it? First opportunity. That led you to become Amina. Um, when I was in college, a junior in college, I did an internship with Spear Records. LA had yeah. that yeah. at the time with um Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. He had given oh, Shakespeare shit. was um a songwriter at the time. He was the biggest songwriter yeah, at, at the, the time. time. Yep. And um there was a his manager name was Tasha Tasha Stafford, and that was that Tasha was how Stafford, I got it. I didn't know that. Stone wife. Mm -hmm. Stone and Tasha Stafford. Yeah, they own I, I, Icon. I, I always say that. So if she ever sees my yeah. interviews, I always say like that. She was the first person. And I was interning there, but she didn't have me like cleaning the toilets and shit like that. She had me like redlining contracts and shit. That's so hard. That was, that was the first time. Really? Mm -hmm. Perfect. That's, shout out to Tasha. Mm -hmm. I, that's a good moment. Tammy? Because I met you. You was working at... <laughs> At guests. At guests. Yeah. So for you to go from working at guests to being here is like, how'd you do that? Uh, I will say my first opportunity was while I was at Spelman. Um, Ike Morris gave me a shout position. Out to Ike. To, shout out to Ike to be his an assistant. I mean, to be his assistant at his management company. Mm. So that's when I met like Jazzy Faye and um, Stewie Rock and Coco Kiss. And, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so crazy. So long ago. But yeah, so that's when I met them. And then I feel like my second biggest and greatest opportunity was working at um, Music Group Booking Agency. You worked at Music Group? With, um, with Amy, Amy and Eric. Really? Yeah, that, at the Artist Factory, yeah, what else? The they was there with factory. us. Yeah. Okay, I, I might have, I might not have connected you to that, but I probably saw you. But 
I knew you from guests. That's why I was like, I, not true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's where I feel like I met so many different executives and managers um, because everyone had to come in and sign the paperwork, paperwork. on behalf of the client. client. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I got to meet with everyone. And that's where I think I understood, like, the foundation of, like, building relationships. Yes. Because, mm -hmm. like, even well, I met Chubby when I was working at Linux Linux Grill. So yeah. that was even before I got there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. I was a host there. So, yeah. But, um, and then after that, I went to work with Boo and Khan and started off at the front desk and worked yeah. my way up. That's when I met you. That's when you was working with Amber, right? When you, because yep. yeah, mm -hmm. I know, yeah, perfect. Yep. Love that. What about you, Melita? Your first big opportunity? Um, the entry, entry opportunity, I'm saying. Into the business, right? Yeah. Um, I would say when my friend from Baltimore uh, moved here, her name's Aisha Door. She was a DJ. And at the time, I was a waitress. And I would just move her around. I knew everybody, like, all the DJs. I was like, oh, like, she, she's a DJ. She's from Baltimore. Like, y'all should know her. So I started getting her booked. And then I met Sunny Digital. This was all, like, really, like, the same time. And then I started, like, helping him with everything. So it was, it was me, Sunny, Metro, and Q. We were, like, a little unit. Ooh. It was called Forbes Atlanta. Oh, wow. Yeah. And um, I was still at Clark Atlanta at the time. And Aisha was like, well, you should be a manager. And I was like, why should I be a manager? Like, I don't know what a manager do. She was like, you're already doing it. And yeah. I was like, hmm, okay. And then that's how I became a manager. So interesting that everybody, kids at home watching. Yes. Everybody's story had some college in it. Yep. Yeah. 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 Some. Yeah. I, some. I, I, I said some. some. I'm a claim a, I'm a claim two semesters. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm yeah. a claim my two semesters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I moved here but, for college specifically. Yeah. But yep. but not only that, not only that, the thing that I wanted to identify that y'all have to give yourselves props for is recognizing the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Like so many people and, and especially in this new business, right? The old business, what we all came up in, a gatekeeper had to let you in. Right. You had to know one person that was like, even if that even if you passed him later, he still somebody had to let you in. Now there's no entry. You can literally that's a problem. Though. No, 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 a problem. no I'm, not, I'm not saying it's not. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not going a, there. But what I'm saying is, is that to me, the, the, the results of that problem is women uh, and not women. I'm sorry. It's people in general, not not understanding the opportunity that that's in front of them, because. The reason why we're all successful is I think people, I'm going to give it to you like this. I think what most people want is they want someone to give them a solve puzzle, right? So put the puzzle down and solve it. And I can do that for you, but I'm hurting you. All of us got puzzle pieces mm -hmm. and was like, oh, I can manage. Oh, I could be an a and mm -hmm. Oh, I could do that. Like, and we made our life. And I feel like people are sitting home like, man, if somebody just call me and tell me, come on, it don't work <laughs> every, like that. Every, everybody, no, wants, yeah. everybody wants to skip steps. They do. You know what I'm saying? So you put out a thing, post for interns, and you're like, they're like, well, how much do this get paid? You get paid zero fucking dollars. By That's the way. how much you get paid. Like, why, why am I, you're not, I'm teaching you everything, right? So what I do is, instead, I get interns from college. Yeah. So I went down to the HBCUs or whatever and registered with them, so... Now I can say, like, that's what, how I did with Malcolm. Yeah. Malcolm interned with me mm -hmm. through, when, through um, Morehouse and all that. And then he went to the labels and did this and that and third. And now he's back with me. But that I give them school credit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to offer you stuff. Like, yeah, I give you stipends and shit like that. But I'm not paying you to teach you shit. Yeah. Right? And, and <laughs> the crazy thing is, is, like, I interned for free for that long. Years. I did all and you don't even shit. know it's interning. Right? And you don't like, even know that you're interning. <laughs> right? I did it for mad <laughs> long. And never got paid. And never asked. So I interned for Jacob York. I interned for all kind of shit. I've stood and watched whatever Deb was doing. Deb mm -hmm. Anthony and yeah. blah, blah, blah. Like, yep. I did a lot of shit before I got paid a dollar. Yeah. You know what a I'm lot. saying? Yeah, a lot. By the way, and when you get that dollar, you appreciate it way different because you knew how hard it was to earn it. I see so many people like, I want, a, and I want a job, I want a job. And I'm like, what do you even want a job for? Right. No, like, you even understand what it entails. Nigga, but not only that, they really want you to pay them while they chase their dream. Correct. This is your dream. I'm not doing that. But that's mm -hmm. why you saw me working <laughs> yes, at Guess. Yes. I was that's working why I'm glad you said that. I, I love that you said I was a waitress. Like, that's, so, I didn't know that. That's so I was so a waitress dope. in the clubs at SO, <laughs> DOA. What? Yes. Now you're the boss giving them your credit card. Let's give it up for Let's clap for that. That's dope. You need to celebrate that. No, nah, seriously, because, I, like I tell people, I worked at the airport. I was a, I was a wheelchair yeah, person. Yeah, Chris knew you at the airport, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to work for Delta. So mm -hmm. I was a bag runner. Like, I'm like, I, nigga, to be honest with you, everybody asked me, where do you get so much? 
pride from? Like, why are you so hungry? I'm like, nigga, every time I walk through that airport, I see I see wheelchair pushers, and I remember that was me. Mm -hmm. And then I get in my seat, and I look out the window, and I see a nigga in the freezing cold rain and loading bags. Yeah. I remember. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, thank God I had the balls to bet on myself. Because if, and by the way, I feel like that needs to be more of a trend. We need more of betting on us. Because if Amina was, had a, a billion dollar company, imagine how many young black kids have an opportunity because mm -hmm. of that. That's why I want us to win. I don't want us to win for me. I'm straight. Like, I'm good on money. Like, I make a lot more. But if I stop today, You're good. all my houses are paid off. I mean, obviously, you ain't going to see me at Bar Margo. You know, or a restaurant spending four hundred dollars on dinner. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be a civilian. I might get one car, but maybe two. But I'm straight. Right. <laughs> Period. You know what I mean? And but so, but I do want to see more of us investing energy into fucking teaching and educating these kids on like the opportunity, because the system is fucked up now because they don't think they need us, and they do. Yeah, but we have to be cognizant of like. The community and all of that stuff too. I think it's very big on giving back to the community and mm -hmm. all of that mm -hmm. stuff if you start at the root of the problem. So like the kids and the parents and those households, like if you start there. I'm not gonna go give back to my community so my community could kill me. No, that's what <laughs> right. I'm not gonna fucking do. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. So like I'm gonna have to do it the smart way. Yes. Because I'm not gonna be having turkey drives and then go to the cookie shop and get my head blowed off. No yep. fucking way. You know what I'm saying? In my community. So like we have to like look at things and the root I'm a realist me too so I'm mm -hmm. just not doing it if you, you know find me I will help you I am not coming to find I'm you I'm not doing Hello. it right but I do think that like <laughs> we should advantage. have music back in schools you know what mm -hmm. I mean I think I want to go to like plays my kids plays when I was in growing up in New York like I was I was all kind of shit I did the how the elephant got his trunk I did you know what I'm yeah. saying there was theater in schools um teach your kids how to read music you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, stimulate their play mind. Play the recorder. What, like, <laughs> play the recorder. Have your kid come home and read for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Tell me about Peter Pan, Chocho, because yeah. he's reading Peter Pan in school. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, stuff like that. I think it's the root of the problem is the family structure and the children. Mm -hmm. I agree. Grown people, y'all grown already. So, I don't know. Fucking get it the best way you know how. I agree. Like, honestly, I just don't have time to try to raise you again from your, what your mother failed to do. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. yep. But I think that we should try to educate the women first. That's so a teenager, you know what I'm saying? My daughter's 14. So I'm raising her. So she ain't going to raise my seeds and my lineage. is not going to be fucked up. Yeah. Right. Guess yeah. what? I even gave my daughter still my last name hyphen with her father's last name. Cause you're not changing the D op, the Senegalese out of you. You ain't never going to forget it. You know what I'm saying? So I love that. It's, there's, there's Especially if I'm it. the one out there putting in work for the last name. His last name ain't shit. Right. <laughs> my last name is the weight. We gonna use my name too. I'm, I no, love that's that. That's what he said. He's, his last name is Williams. And he yeah. was like, I don't want that slave yeah. last name. Like, I'm not gonna, you know, whatever. So he was like, your last name is literally a tribe. Like, yeah. everyone is related with that last name. So I want to do that. Like, and, and teaching your kids about it, right? Yeah. And teaching my son opens the door for me. I wish Melita would walk in here and he ain't open the door for her. Absolutely. Look, you know what I'm <laughs> Sir, if you don't get up and go open the door for this lady, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Or like my kids' friends, like, no, people are not raising their kids right. That's why people are growing up and fucked up. And that's why kids mm -hmm. are pulling out guns at each other at school. Because my daughter have friends come to the house, right? She 14. I said, I come downstairs. I ain't seen these bitches all morning. <laughs> I love it. And I come downstairs and they... <laughs> In my fridge, they getting juices, they doing it. I said, Ma'am, uh, did I sleep with any of y'all last night? When you see me, you need to say good morning. Yes. Right. Like, good yeah, morning. Like, what's you yes. Kids coming yeah. to your house or coming to your car, they don't even speak they to you. Who speak? the fuck? Uh uh, yeah. get out. Nah. <laughs> get out. In the same get way. Out. Absolutely not. Like, and even to your kid. Yes. Hi. Like, when you're hello. Them, they shouldn't just be like, hello, speak to everybody that's in the room. Like, yeah. we're not teaching our children the right way. And then we mad that they grew up and was fucked up. I, by the way, I agree 100% with you. You are not wrong. That's why I said, learn something, then have kids. Because mm -hmm. a lot of motherfuckers, like my mom had me when she was eight, basically 18. Right. We grew up together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, that's like, like, I mean, she's my mom, but our relationship more feels like sometimes I'm dad. Mm -hmm. Mom, why the fuck you keep gambling? I don't know. I can't help it. <laughs> like, you know, like sometimes I'm dad, but mm -hmm. that made me a man. But my, I don't want my kids with that weight. I right. want my kids, like, I don't want my kids worrying about, like, I got to, like, I had to leave home and make sure I sent money home. They don't got to send money home. Nope. Just go fucking build your life that makes you happy yeah. and the freedom. And I also don't, te I teach my kids, don't go get a job. You got, my daddy is paying every bill. 
use that time to learn something that will pay you forever. Because mm-hmm. you don't have, like, what are you hustling for? To buy some new sneakers? You don't get life then. If you hustling, because I'll buy you sneakers. I ain't buying you no Gucci sneakers, nigga. <laughs> my son is praying he fits my shoe size. He's a nine and a half. He's like, I just wanted to stop at 11 and a half and I'm good. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But it's like, I feel like we are, we are educators. I don't want to believe it, but we are all, everybody in this couch is a superhero. And to me, like, I wanted y'all here because... Y'all are too fucking dope to be in the fucking shadows. Y'all are too fucking dope, too powerful to be in the shadows. Because y'all, to me, this is going to be women watching saying, I need to get in touch with them. And women are so different when it comes to helping other women. Mm-hmm. So, all right, last question I'm going to ask y'all because I, I can do this all day. I'm going to ask y'all last question. Y'all talking to two questions, by the way. First question is, if you're talking to a 14-year-old girl, not your daughter, 14 teenager girl, not your daughter, who wants to be in the music business, who's like, I want to be you, but it's the last time you're ever going to talk to her. What are three things you're going to tell her to do that you know she's going to be fine if she never sees you again? Three things. Yep. I gotta think. Never compromise your morals. Stay and stand in your confidence and always believe in yourself. Isn't that, staying, isn't that staying with your confidence? It's kind of the same thing. I'm going to give you one more. I'm going to let you get one more. Because okay. I heard that I'll be confused. Like, I'll walk away like, isn't that the same? The two and three the same? I, what I would I say. Mean, so I'm just. I think, I mean, conf- I guess, I guess I see what you're saying. Um, ooh. <laughs> Race. Okay. Like that. I'm trying to think. Hmm. <laughs> Anybody, you go, go, help us. Yeah, I can always go back to me. If I, 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 I've never answered this question. If y'all want me, I would probably answer it. If I want, I'll say, I'll tell them, don't make no babies. <laughs> That's the first rule. Because once you make a baby, your life just changed. It does change. Don't make no babies. So I would say, always wear rubbers. Always protect yourself. <laughs> don't make no babies. Trust me. Give yourself a chance to figure it out. Mm-hmm. And the making a baby does not give you an opportunity. The second thing I'll tell them is, is, Nobody knows more than you. They're just better actors. So don't think that they walk in their confidence because we all know in this game, we know some people who have no talent, but they walk around like they that nigga and the world treats them like that. Then we know niggas that have all the talent and they walk around like, I think this is good. And people are like, get the fuck out of here. So stand, so oh, know that you confident in what you're doing because you can be right. You can be, just because you're wrong today, don't mean, like when I, you ask any nigga, I was running around studios in 2007 saying, my nigga Tehran is better than all of y'all niggas. And niggas would be like, what? You were, t- nigga, <laughs> it's history. I'm right now. What did Kanye say? We'll never know. I'm right now, nigga. So that's the second thing I say. And the third thing I say is, is that, um, is that don't let anybody little boy you. You know, don't let nobody make you play small because you're small. If you got, because what we learned, I don't know about you guys, I'm going to speak for me. What I learned was that I'm sitting in rooms as a 31-year-old man trying to figure it out, sitting next to a 21-year-old white kid that has, feels like he could run the world. And that's only because they told him he could. And he believed it. So I would tell, that's what I would say. That would be my three. I would say stay focused and tunnel vision. Um, yeah. I put those two together yeah, that's good. because I feel like, Especially so give me your three again. Give me a three age. again. I want, I want you to give me a three again. <laughs> okay. I'm going to send you this. <laughs> okay. So maintain your confidence. Don't compromise your morals. And stay focused and keep tunnel vision. Because I feel like a lot of times in this generation that, you know, you end up comparing yourself to the next person because mm-hmm. of social media. Yep. And you don't even know if whatever this person's presenting on social media is a facade or if it's mm-hmm. true. And then you feel like, oh, this person's 21 and they're a millionaire and yeah. I'm 25 and I haven't hit, you know, yeah. half a million. Just don't pay attention to that. That's dope. What did you say, Mina? You ready? I was thinking about it. I was... I'll add this. Enjoy the journey. <clears throat> A lot of people are unhappy. That's a, that's a, a lot of one. people are unhappy because they have a destination that they think they need to be at to be happy. So it's yeah. like, I got to get a job. I got to get this certain amount of money. And it's like, nah, nigga. That, you got to enjoy yourself, enjoy your happiness. That's what I would say. I what would, would you say? say? Outwork everyone else. Because mm-hmm. um, you'll have plenty of time to sleep when you're dead or rich. Yep. 
Um, I would say, um, find, oh, be able to recognize an opportunity when it's presented. Mm, that's good. good And um, You have to believe in something Mm. You know what I'm saying I think faith I'm not being Not for sure That's good though But you have to believe in something If it's not a God Allah Yourself You know know, know what I'm saying Yourself You gotta believe in something My executive coach Told me this It actually gave me All the peace I needed You just triggered it she said, write down your values, mm-hmm. like write down your values. And I wrote it down. And then she was like, then she was like, write down your last company's values. Like, what did, and my, my values and theirs didn't line up. So it was like, Absolutely. it was kind of like, it was okay with the breakup now. Cause like, damn, I want to change lives. I want to help people. Mm-hmm. And like I said, they want to make money and don't get me wrong. I want to make money too. Mm-hmm. But like, we all know when you black, you kind of got to do it a certain way or you do go back to your community and you are the enemy and you got to worry about it. Right. You know that. So, mm. yeah. What was your three? I would say know your worth. Um, I mean, in this business, it's really hard. You, you, you'll forget it easily just to be in position. Um, another one, have boundaries. Know them, have them. Like, don't <laughs> have boundaries <laughs> at all times because if you don't, people will take advantage of that. You won't Absolutely. have a life. You won't have a life. Um... And the last thing I would say, really, like, walk into your truth. Like, whatever you believe is for you, like, just do it. Like, and be honest with yourself. Be honest with others. And just live your life how you want to live it. Perfect. So, last question. I ask every guest. Mm -hmm. So, this show is called The God Show. The God, God's is an acronym for goats and underdogs. Mm -hmm. Uh, Do you consider yourself a goat or underdog? Underdog. Underdog. That African Jamaican culture about to come out. Just say it. <laughs> Goat me. No, nah. <laughs> I, I would say underdog too, because from what I would, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'd want to be. Well, I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all are all goats. And I'm going to tell y'all why. If you were talking to the waitress when you were a waitress at Esso and told her this was your life's going to be, she would be like, bitch, you lying. Oh, my God. <laughs> right or wrong. <laughs> Same for you. If you talk to the girl at Express or Guess and you said this is your life going to be, that, that girl would be so proud of you. Right or wrong. Right. Same with you. The, like, you see what I'm trying to say? Like, and for me, that's what makes y'all goats. And I just want to tell you, I appreciate y'all for showing up for me. Uh, this has been a, a, a route that I've been on, a journey I've been on that I've been enjoying. And when I have people like you guys sit on the couch, it's always special to me. Like, that's when Aaron was playing. I, I didn't play because I'm like, no, these are my peers. Mm-hmm. It's different than when you're interviewing somebody who, you know, y'all are my peers. And I've been in the trenches with all of y'all at some point on something. And I'm proud of y'all. So none of y'all are underdogs. Y'all hustle like underdogs, but that's how you become the GOAT. Because you never forget where you came from. That's why I went to the youth version of y'all. Because that person, if the 14-year-old Ray looked at me, he would be like, nigga, you lying. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not. He like, you know what I'm saying? So for me, yeah. I just want to thank y'all for being on the show. Uh, let's give it up for the ladies, everybody in the room. <laughs> this was actually way better than I thought it was going to be. Not, no, because, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you got to just say the stupidest shit. Sometimes. <laughs> That's what I'm going to tell, like, tell y'all why. I'm going to tell y'all why. Can I tell y'all why I thought, I thought that? It's the same reason why you wasn't here. It's the same reason why I entered in here saying, hey, guys, it's going to be good for y'all. Because I do ride a very, very thin line. Mm-hmm. Of and I'm at the intersection of music, culture, and media now. And sometimes people watch from a distance and see what I'm doing, and it looks like I'm. If you just saw a clip, you ain't paying attention anyway. Mm-hmm. Like nigga, this only reason for what I'm doing is to change lives. Like I said, my value was to change lives. Like mm-hmm. I, I want to give people the opportunity that I pray for. So with that being said, I just didn't want you know. Sometimes you're doing ratio. Oh shit, what are you gonna tell? Nah, bro. Let me just let y'all know. <laughs> You, that, my, you know I ain't lying that's why I said I didn't that's why I said I didn't know it was gonna be good because sometimes you're talking to people and you know we gotta be filtered but this was way better cause I learned like I learned better I learned more like so females every woman <laughs> and young lady and girl cause there are some girls that'll watch this that see this I'm I'm proud of what they seen because there's no way you watch this and you don't get inspired to get off your ass and do something and right. to me, that's what makes y'all the GOAT. Because in our community, we, don't, we didn't have lineage where people saying, 
like you do, because you're like, I'm Senegalese. I'm, but and Amer African-American, we kind of grow up like, protect yourself, figure it out, and go, you know what I mean? So for us to all be up here as good as we are, that shit is incredible to me. Because, nigga, I wasn't supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. I, my mother still is kind of like, how the fuck did you right. do this? <laughs> my family still thinks it's luck. I'm like, bro, luck is one year, <laughs> two years. I'm on my 19th year. When do y'all know that? Sit comfortably in it and know that y'all straight. Because my mom is still be like, I don't want to fuck up because what happens if you fall off? I'm like, mom, <laughs> if we off. fall off, we don't leave no house. We don't leave right. no lifestyle. That's why I was working for. Right. So I just want to tell you, thank you. Shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to Two Lost Distribution. Shout out to Tone Carry, Yoko Vaca. And this is The God Show. And we are out. <laughs> that was fun. That was. Women are so dope. Niggas be in there like. So bad. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead.